pleasure to be here and present Cantarga. So, uh, obviously, we're based here in Lund, so I guess most of you know the company. But for those of you who doesn't know so much about it, we are an antibody company. Uh, we are focusing on making antibodies against one molecular target called IL-1 RAP. And uh, it's one of those targets that the more you start to learn about it, the more you realize that there is so many opportunities here. And we're just scratching the surface at this point in time. But uh, we have two different antibodies in the clinical development right now. So we have nadunilumab, which is being designed for cancer therapy. And we have, let's say, the, the much more easier to pronounce name, CAN10, uh, in development for autoimmunity infla inflammation. Uh, the cancer program is the one that I think most of you n n knows about, and we have treated more than 300 patients right now. And it looks really promising, and we are advancing this program into late-stage development. Uh, and uh, currently we have one clinical trial ongoing in triple negative breast cancer, which is a randomized trial. We have promising data in pancreatic cancer, non-small cell lung cancer, and we'll come back to that. And uh, we also have a, a smaller trial in leukemia starting up uh, in the near future, uh, a trial which is fully sponsored by the U.S. Department of Defense. Uh, in autoimmunity inflammation, uh, it is a really hot area right now. And uh, I will show you a little bit on why we believe that our drug is extremely well positioned in this uh, area. Uh, the phase one is ongoing right now and everything looks good. So, so then, uh, quickly looking at the pipeline then. So nadunilumab in phase two. Uh, data in a number of cancer indications uh, and triple negative breast cancer ongoing, and CAN10 being developed in difficult to pronounce diseases like hydradenitis superativa. And I know uh, Jonas is going to test you after, afterwards at the after work session. Uh, and then we have systemic sclerosis. And we also have a platform program called CANXX. Uh, so since most of you may not be so familiar with the CAN10 program, and it, it is a program which has been flying a little bit under the radar, but it's creating lots of interest in the community. So I'm starting with it. So first, a little bit about HS. So it's, first of all, it's a much more common disease than anyone would expect. Uh, about 1% of Western population uh, will get it in one form or, or another. Uh, and it starts out as an inflammation in the hair follicles, which is then getting worse, uh, developing into something called draining tunnels, which is more or less like acne on the inside of the skin. Uh, and it's very painful and itchy. And as you can see to the right here, when you reach uh, the stage three of a disease, uh, there is very little treatment and you basically have to use a knife and get rid of this part of the skin. Uh, there is development in the disease, and there is quite a lot of noise around the anti ali 17 antibodies, but they do not uh, treat all, all patients are not treated well with it, and uh, there is still a major clinical need here. So, CAN10, uh, so what CAN10 is doing is it's blocking the IL1 receptor, IL33 receptor, and the IL36, or the IL1. Uh, IL-33 and IL-36 signals at the same time. Uh, and it's doing that by blocking IL-1 RAP. And we're not going to go through the biology. But what's interesting is that a complex disease like HS uh, has one inflammatory component, one itch component, and then these draining tunnels. And they are basically, the disease are driven by these different cytokines, IL-1 driving inflammation, IL-33 potentially driving the itch, and IL-36 driving the draining tunnels. So then if you look at competition, uh, we, there are antibodies against IL-1 and IL-36 in the clinical development. And Böhringer ingelheim has an antibody against IL-36 that has shown really interesting and strong effects on the draining tunnels much less on the inflammation, while 
the ABV antibody, which is targeting the IL-1 system, shows a really good effect on the inflammatory part, but more modest effects on the draining tunnels. So since you have a good memory from the last slide, you can see that CAN-10 is doing both of these things at the same time. So we really believe that we have something which is very competitive in this field uh, and obviously better than the ABV and uh, Beringer ingelheim antibodies. So, but where we are right now is that we're preparing for a phase two trial, which is starting next year, but we still have to do some work in the phase one. Uh, but in the phase one, so what we have seen is that we have finalized the single dosing and communicated results. So the safety is excellent of a CAN-10 antibody. Uh, but we also see that the antibody is binding to two types of immune cells called monocytes and neutrophils, and they are the cells that are driving a disease like hydrogenitis superativa. And uh, what we've also done, which you can see to the right, is that we have taken out blood from these healthy volunteers and uh, stimulated with IL-36, and what we see is that we basically turn off the response, so, so these cells can no longer respond to, to IL-36, which is then driving the disease. So we believe that we have a pretty good package here to go into phase two, which is creating excitement. So that's CAN-10. So then going into cancer. So now we're switching uh, directions. So IL-1 RAP is overexpressed on cancer cells and it's overexpressed on immune cells in the tumor microenvironment. And we treated about 73 patients, or we treated 73 patients with pancreatic cancer who were newly diagnosed and metastatic. And we see that we get pretty good results when we combine with chemotherapy here. But what's making it, it even more exciting is that we've been looking at patients that have high levels of IL-1 RAP in the tumor and lower levels. And we can see that it's, it, it is really the patients with the higher levels that are driving the efficacy signal. So, so they have a survival of 14.2 months, which is, I would say, five or six months better than you would expect from chemotherapy here. Uh, and also they have really pronounced and durable responses. And high IL-1 RAP is associated with worse prognosis. So we are super excited about this program, are now redesigning the upcoming phase two or phase three trial, which are currently being discussed or are going to be discussed with the FDA to include a diagnostic kit here and really select the true responders. So thereby de-risking the program quite a lot and making the next trial much, much more cost efficient. Uh, we also seen another exciting effect. So neuropathy is a very serious side effect of lots of chemotherapies and but neuropathy is also driven by the IL-1 RAP and IL-1 uh, signals. And since we have an antibody which is blocking that, we, we can actually see that the patients are having much less neuropathy in these trials as well. So in a way, we, we are, let's say, combining increased efficacy with uh, actually removal of some of the side effects. So that makes us very excited and makes lots of clinicians very excited because this is a major problem for clinicians. And finally, in lung cancer, so this is a messy slide, I know that, but the key point is that uh, we treated about 40 patients. It's a quite mixed group of patients, but we can see that there is a subgroup here uh, building up, which is what's called the non-squamous second-line patients, where we have 90% response rate. They have a survival of about 26 months. This is so much better than these patients can uh, expect. And uh, why do we, this type of patient get such a good response? It, it is because they have been treated with immune therapy before, and we see that the immune therapy is really modifying the tumor microenvironment in a positive way with upregulation of IL-1 RAP. So again, a very exciting result to take forward. So I would like to finish off here by showing the upcoming milestones. So in pancreatic cancer, we are planning and preparing for an upcoming trial starting age two next year, which will be very much based on a diagnostic kit being imp 
included to make sure that we get exactly the right patients into the trial. Uh, we have a randomized trial in triple negative breast cancer reading out during H1 uh, this year. Uh, again, a major value inflection point for a company. We have an upcoming leukemia study starting uh, later on this year, hopefully with the first patient in. And the CAN-10 program, uh, so I presented all the single dosing, uh, but we're now doing the multiple dosing. We're doing that in patients with psoriasis and uh, we will start to communicate results during the first half next year. So by that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and very happy to take some questions. Tell us about the commercial benefit of combining your candidate with ADC therapies. So that sounds like cancer. So I think, uh, so ADCs is really the next generation chemotherapies and we've seen very good effects with, with when we combine with chemotherapy, so we increase efficacy and we reduce side effects. And these antibody drug conjugates, they are more intelligent chemotherapies, but they have basically the same mechanism of action. So it, we are believe that we will have the same type of synergies and that's a huge commercial opportunity. So the next question starts with a help. Uh, help me interpret the implications of CAN-10s preclinical results. So, so we have a huge file of preclinical results with CAN-10 and I haven't shown anything, but what we've seen is that a very large number of diseases, both skin diseases, uh, uh, cardiovascular diseases, uh, diseases like systemic sclerosis, uh, where, where we see very, very good effects and uh, effects that are much more pronounced by targeting IL-1 rap than uh, targeting the individual cytokines, which has been standard today. So I believe that we have a huge opportunity in the autoimmune space. And what, what, what's often said is that if, you, if you're successful in one autoimmune inflammatory disease, you have the opportunity to be some kind of pipeline in a pill. And that's exactly what we believe that we have in Canton. Um, you plan, plan to raise capital in December, correct? So we're doing a right, or we're having an EGM later on in, I think it's December 2nd, and then we obviously start launching the rights issue, yes. Yeah, how will the uh, proceeds be used? So obviously we, it, it is to, to continue all these preparations, but if you look at what's really key here is that we have a number of ongoing discussions. We want to do that with a good cash balance, not a bad cash balance. Uh, we are also developing a diagnostic kit in pancreatic cancer to, to make sure that we can do a competitive next stage trial. And obviously the CAN-10 preparations before we start the phase two in AHS is important and obviously make sure that we have enough runway. Can you elaborate on how you quantify the commercial opportunities of your different projects? And we have to read this too. Sorry for such an open question. No, don't be sorry. Those are the best questions. Yeah. I don't know who you are, but you're doing it right. Now you get no, so, so, so let's start with pancreatic cancer. There, there is very little novel drugs. Uh, there are only in the US about 70,000 patients being diagnosed each year. And uh, if you have a new drug coming in which shows a meaningful difference, I, I would assume that you could probably charge $100,000 easily per patient. And then you can do the calculations yourself where you end up. <laughs> uh, and if you go for CAN-10, because there, are, there is progress in the IL-17s, and I think the, the market opportunity which has been talked about for IL-17 is somewhere between 5 and 15 billion US. So the upside are enormous or is enormous in these two programs. Did you just do the calculation for me because I really need help? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thank you.